well, try to do another unboxing here from Japan. And this package arrived today. Actually, it was supposed to arrive yesterday, but um, the courier, unfortunately, uh, there was so many stuff uh, they needed to deliver that they couldn't bring it in yesterday. So, today it is. Um, but yeah, let's start with just the opening of this beautiful, hey, not very really beautiful box, it's a normal box, but there should be quite a lot of fun stuff in this, and I do need to be a little careful with it, because, well, it's my precious, precious stuff from Japan. In a while since I last did an unboxing um, because right now I'm kind of like on the schedule for this. Um, I pre order something, and whenever that something comes out, I um, get it. Uh, and then because I don't want to just ship one item, um, and I use a proxy service, so um, they have the storage for I believe it's 45 days for free. Um, and then, like, every item will start charging you if you store your item for longer than that. So, I usually tend to just accumulate a lot of items through those, like, month or so of free storage. Um, I don't need to be careful, though, because um, the packing doesn't take just one day. Um, I am definitely opening this box for your own app right now. So, but, oh well. Nothing can stay between me and my precious, precious merch. What is it? What? Uh, yeah, it's definitely not supposed to be opened like this. Don't repeat my mistakes. If you are to ever receive a package like that, and, okay, can I just ravage it from here? Well, uh, now that I destroyed the box, let's get started. And I can see immediately the goodies. Uh, these are actually the items which kicked off this pre-order season. Uh, only like one of the three, like two of the three items which kicked off the pre-order season. And these are pretty, pretty sunny hip make plushies. I actually already have uh, Gentaro and uh, Jakurai. Because the day they announced a uh, re-release of this, I was like, I need them. And but the thing is, like, some of them you can find um, on, like, Japanese auctions used um, at, like, a decent price, which is not super spiked, right? Uh, the problem is, for this little guy, this little guy here, Ramuda, uh, the price of a used one, like, because they released those, like, a while ago, and... They sold out, and there was, like, a long period of time without them. And now that they were releasing the new divisions, um, they released the old ones, too. And uh, essentially, I was like, okay, that's my time to get Ramuda. But, like, if I'm getting Ramuda, might as well just... They, they're adorable, so I wanted to get all three of them. And then I was like, okay, Jakurai is also very adorable, and also Jakurai comes with cinnamon roll, so... Um, but yeah, Ramuda was by far the most over overpriced Sanrio plushie out of all of them uh, used. And I can kind of see why Ramuda like, suits Sanrio really, really well. But yeah, now I'm finally... Um, and yeah, and, uh, but Gentaro was the one who was consistently on Japanese auctions a little cheaper than a new plushie like that. And then uh, Jakurai was about same price as he was new, but I could just get him faster. So I got the faster one. Um, so yeah, and finally the ones who I could not find cheap enough, uh, used, arrived. I'm glad, then Posse will be nice. Um, also I actually did find the dice, um, for a good enough price, but unfortunately the seller did not ship dice, um, and they just refunded me, so, yep, I had to get a new two, and he's joining Ramuda. And, uh, I mean, frogs are basically, like, Link bosses um, mascots at this point, so I have to get this. Um, okay, now I can already see some other goodies, and this is 
Um, I'm actually filming using some of those disc boxes, like I'm putting my phone a little up so that I get like a slightly better angle, but uh, this is like Soma's variety show. Um, and I was just collecting the rest of them. Um, I, I bought like three of them randomly and they turned out to be from two different seasons uh, and like the collection was definitely not full. So I decided to complete the collection of those Blu-rays. Um, thankfully, they're not like crazy expensive, but I think this is number one. Um, and there will be two seasons of this, so um, so let's okay. Um, I guess this one was the one I got separately, and now I need uh. This is actually the other pre-order, which um, dated when this package was going to be built and shipped. And this is, well, Shibuya vs. Yokohama. Um, I'm actually not a huge... Like, I used to be not a huge fan of uh, Hypnic Stage, because I'm so used to voice actors, like the original voices. So, to me, like, having the tracks uh, performed by, um, like, not original voices was a little weird. But then... Um, I listened, I think, like, YouTube recommended to me the, uh, one of the tracks from, um, the stage, which was, uh, the, the Dirt Dog stage, and I actually got myself that one, and I watched it, and I, I just love the tracks, and, I mean, even if it's not original voices, it's not original songs either. Uh, to be fair, though, the TDD one, like, you only have four original characters, and then, like, four of them are just musical exclusive characters, so it was, like, a little easier in terms of getting adapted to the new voices. Uh, for this one, we will see, but, I mean, Shibuya vs. Yokohama, I mean, Flink Posse, second season, so much drama. Um, I'm excited for the songs and, like, for the lyrics. Um, there is, like, uh, a person on Twitter translating this, so I am definitely excited for, um, like, new Flink Posse songs from this. But, yeah, uh, and this is, I think, a Blu-ray limited edition, so... Uh, it should, I think, include uh, the di disc with the uh, songs. At least if it's the same way uh, the um, GDD one was. But yeah. Okay, so now, aha, uh -huh, here we have a funny thing. Um, I don't actually have a lot of Idolish 7 merch. I think pretty much all I have is like the live, um, like a reunion. And I. So. As you can probably, well, I don't have my bracelet on now, but, um, like, I do have some jewelry, but, um, this earring actually is a merch. Um, it's a little hard to see because it's so small, but it's a hard stability, uh, so Twisted Wonderland. And I got that one from Japanese auctions for, like, dirty cheap for what it is, because it's pink gold, um, version of it, but I got it for, like, 60 bucks. Um, and it's been, like, an accessory I wear constantly, because with me, it's just kind of... If I have to take it off, I forget to put it on, and then I never wear it again. Um, but essentially, this thing right here is a ring. Um, and let me just show it to you, because... I mean, I'm not sure how many of you have seen it. Uh, it also should come with an adorable plushie. But it is an Idolish 7 trigger ring. Um, so... Okay, so I have Kinako plushie here, which came with all those KISS collaboration rings, and I guess the ring itself is right here. Honestly, I'm not sure if the size is going to fit me. I mean, I can always wear it on a different finger if it doesn't. This ring was a little big. I mean, I got it used. I didn't even look at the size. I didn't even know the ring sizes, honestly. Uh, so I got it, and then I realized uh, it only fits on my uh, middle finger and not really on my ring finger. Um, but the little trigger ring, um, let's see, I think it's supposed to be size 9, so, uh, good thing humans have many fingers of many different sizes, and it is, I believe, a silver ring, and immediately I dropped it, but, um, you can see it's, has this little moon, sh crescent moon shape, and trigger colors around it. So it has 10 
on one side, and they're pretty small, so it's a little hard to see, but uh, Ryu and Gaku colors on the other side. Um, I need to figure out if it actually fits me. It might be pretty small, so I might wear it on my pinky, actually. <laughs> That's funny. Um, but hey, now I have a pinky ring. Um, I need to remember what my actual ring size is for the future, but uh, for, on the pinky... It fits pretty well, so um, I, I I will see when I'm going to wear it. I do want to wear it kind of every day because usually it's either like I wear it every day or I don't wear it. Uh, but with this ring, I will see. Um, it's definitely like I can probably fit it on my other. Yeah, it's pretty much a pinky ring, ring for me, uh, which is completely fine. It's nice to have, like, variations in which uh, fingers I have rings for. Um, but yeah, this is the Kiss Collaboration Silver Ring. Uh, not as good of a deal as my uh, Twisted Wonderland ring was, uh, in terms of, well, uh, metal to uh, how expensive the ring was, but still, not too bad. Um, okay, and now... Okay, so I can see this is another clothing piece, which may or may not fit. Um, I'm still... Uh, I decided I won't be too worried about it. But essentially... So this is kind of like a, an old thing right now. I don't think you can just easily find this anywhere. I saw pretty much only one. And I can kind of see by the size that I can probably wear it, which makes me happy. Um, but it is... An old, old clothing collaboration um, with one of the uh, fashion brands and Medicode, which um, some of you will know, uh, Saito Soma was a part of. And as there are actually pictures of Soma demonstrating this um, hoodie. And I really like the size. So there is only one size there, uh, one size fits all. And because it's Japan and I am a little tall for Japanese especially for a Japanese woman, I was worried that it might not fit me, but I'm looking at it now, and I must say it will probably fit, um, which makes me quite happy. Um, so yeah, there is was this thing. Um, okay, I'm not even through like most of my box yet. Um, I got through some of it, but still quite a lot left. Uh, I love unboxings. Okay, so I believe this is some more, more Soma... DVDs, and this is, um, I think, like the special, the special edition one. Um, so, and um, this is a third disc from. So essentially, what I ended up, I ended up getting like the first and the third discs from the first season, and then I got the whole second season because. I do have a second disc from the second season already, so there will be a duplicate, but uh, it was still cheaper than getting everything separately, so um, so yeah, I decided to accept the duplicate and live on. Um, and I believe this will be some lives, uh, exciting, uh, exciting stuff. Okay, so remember how I said that I don't have a lot of merch from Idolish 7, uh, except for I have a reunion live? Well... I got myself. So with Idolish, I actually, I mean, I really like Idolish lives. They're very pretty, very pretty costumes, a lot of very talented voice actors. But also Idolish lives, like a very long, big snippets of them are posted on YouTube for free. So I have for the longest time tried to convince myself I don't need uh, first life. But here it is, Road to Infinity, the first Idolish 7 life. And it comes with three DVDs. Uh, it, it's a very similar box, actually, to Reunion uh, Limited Edition, which I have um, in terms of contents. And just, like, three DVDs, a little booklet, I think. Let me see. Yep, they ha it comes with a little booklet. Let me show you the booklet itself. And it will be just filled with pretty, pretty pictures uh, of voice actors. Uh, yay, Shirai! Yeah, there they go. Ken. Oh, Ken. Um, I'll just quickly flip through. 
Uh, and I'm also excited for a backstage movie. Uh, it's it's I, I like the title which seven includes so this. It's limited edition. Oh, and there we are. Trigger and a lot of pretty pictures. And I know Trigger is actually here. Tarosan, younger Somasan. Um, Sato Takuya. Yep. So essentially, Rivali. And Zul did not take part in this, but um, if I remember correctly, at least Nishiyama Kodaro definitely went to that live, so he saw everyone perform. Okay, and I mean, the discs are actually, they look like super similar to the um, Road to Infinity. I wonder if uh, the like next when the next idolish seven life is going to be and by idolish seven life i mean like not solo lives but the lives where everyone will be together also i'm still waiting for the announcement of this sweet sweet uh zool live blu-ray um okay and here is the thing i was talking about it's soma's uh japanese heart to you i think that's what the series is called and essentially it, it does revolve around Soma doing uh, very Japanese stuff with um, his voice actor co-workers. And this is the entirety of the second season. So I will also, like, I actually do have two number twos now. And now I need to decide what to do with the duplicate. I am so bad at, uh, I don't get rid of duplicates. I need to maybe start selling merch. Okay, so moving on. Yep, I think I know what it is, and this is essentially supposed to complete my kind of somasaito collection of music discs. Well, not really complete, I don't have um, his like single discs, and I'm not planning on getting like the discs of the songs which I already have in some form, but um, I actually do have my beautiful Valentine already, uh, but I do have a normal edition of it. So when I saw a bundle, and this is this all was sold as a bundle, um, I decided that I can just um, get it. And um, I mean, it's not really even a duplicate, considering I never had the um, the limited edition. And I think the limited edition just includes the top Um Also, but now I also have an extra my beautiful Valentine CD. So. Uh, I need to decide what to do with that one. Um, it was also, I guess, was the first Seven Saito CD I ever got, so maybe it has some sentimental value. So maybe I'll just keep it. Um, so this is the first EP, My Blue Vacation. Um, I really like Memento from this one, which basically is a staple at this point. Um, then Quantum Strangers, the classic, the first album. Um, actually, never listened to all the Quantum Stranger songs, but I do like quite a few of them that I did hear, like uh, Kesho Sekai or um, I Lemming Obelisk. No, Lemming I Obelisk. Like, I really like those two, and so I decided to get that one. Even though, I mean, music-wise, more recent Soma is... Like, I like his more recent stuff more. So... And yeah, My Beautiful Valentine, uh, the first album I ever listened to. Um, actually, I got interested in Soma because of his interview about My Beautiful Valentine and uh, him just describing his process of uh, making the songs um, with like, all the references. So I'm pretty excited for this. Oh, I, I think... Oh, I guess it even comes with a Bramid. Um, I didn't realize that would be new. But it, it looks new. Huh. Well, lucky me, I guess. Or maybe it just packed very well. Uh, when you buy used stuff from Japan, you can never tell if it's a used or uh, new, but just uh, no new or used but packed again. And some newer music CDs. This is for my dear vocalist collection, I believe. So last time I got a few dear vocalist music CDs, and I thought some of this uh, like that I had bottom one of this but it ends up I never did and let me 
use the little scissors. Oh, I need to be careful about it. Just to scratch anything. And I guess this two just came to be oh yeah. Plus I got them as a bundle, so that's why the two came together. And I believe this is the first compil two like two different versions of the first compilation album, which essentially with Dear Vocalist the way they did it, they compiled some uh, like fan favorite songs I guess uh, of each group, and then depending on the version you get, uh, so for example this one is Riodo, the then existence CL uh, and you. And this one is um, Momochi, Edash, and um, Judah. And they would have the first three songs be like new exclusive for this album. And then the other six are the ones that are already have been featured on others. So they're actually the same if you look at the set list. So the, the old songs are the same. It's just the new ones that are different. And... Um, I wanted Yabura Sakura because it's the last song of Momochi I don't have in the physical version. Um, or more like, I don't have in the physical version or in like iTunes Raving Beats compilation. And then for this one I was just interested in CL. Uh, it's so sad Ken dipped out of uh, Dear Vocalist project. Uh, Ken is such a good singer and Dear Vocalist is such a good musically like composition standpoint project. So. It, it is a pity, but I am excited to listen to his tracks from here. Okay, and now I am almost done, I guess. But there is some good, good stuff left. Um, so this is another life into my collection. This is obviously, well, Soma's first life, Quantum Strangers. I saw Lemming Eye Obelisk was in the set list for this, so... Oh well, might as well just complete Soma's uh, like collection at this point. And believe the t-shirts should be included in this, although I do not trust it to be of the size I can actually wear. Um, for the reason stated above, I'm just a little too tall for like standard Japanese sizing. Although um, the hoodie was alright, but I think hoodie was also unisex. Um, I'm not sure how unisex the t-shirt included in this. Um, limited edition of his first life is but uh, also this one like for how much stuff is included here it wasn't a very pricey purchase either so and i guess the last thing last thing and what is it let's see what is it do i remember what it is is it the last thing yep it is the last thing but um, I frankly don't remember. I guess I will remember as I open, and I will be like, oh, how could I forget about it? But I genuinely do not remember. Um, so let's check it out. And let's see. Uh, okay. I don't need to do my to the rescue. Um, right. So let's see. Oh, right. Right, right, right. Okay, now I remember. Oh, I didn't know it would pack that well. Um, I thought it was a used one. Um, it's packed almost as if it was new. Um, and you might have seen the sneak sneak peek here, but yeah, I am. Okay, so I have started playing Fade Go like a long time ago and I never got too much into it because the gacha of Fade Go is absolutely relentless. I also watched only like one season of the anime, but then um, I think it was pretty recent that um, there was this leak that Tayanaga is going to voice uh, the new Genshin character, which actually did not come <laughs> out true. Um, but that discourse, I think someone complained that uh, Toshi is mid, and then people uh, started trying to prove them wrong. 
And that's how I actually came across Oberon. And Oberon is probably one of the most interesting uh, characters the Yanaga played, and probably one of the more interesting characters in Fate Go, like both design and lore wise. Um, and I really liked like the history of his design because his um, creator actually um, has insectophobia, so she, she's afraid of, she has a phobia of insects. Uh, but as you can see, like um, Oberon is uh, heavily based on moths and like insects. Um, and, but she, like, actually, um, had to buy, like, a ref she, she bought a reference book of insects just to be able to create Oberon's design, and so a lot of care was put into that design, and also, um, like, the creators of Fate, um, asked her not to, uh, try to adapt her style, uh, for what normally the characters of Fate go look like, so they asked her to do it her style, and then apparently when uh, Nasul, who is the writer of Lost Belt 6, which is where Oberon appears, uh, so like Oberon's design, uh, he actually rewrote a lot of stuff like after the intended ending uh, to include Oberon in the story more. Um, but yeah, and this is essentially a book which features sketches um, from... Uh, Oberon's author, and yeah, as you can tell, Oberon is a pretty popular character um, at this point, and yes, he's voiced by Tenaga, which makes it even better, because uh, honestly, what character is not going to be better being voiced by Tenaga? Um, but uh, I just want to bend it accidentally. So... And, yeah, and, and then I just randomly came across that, like, book being presented as... Uh, I think it got some award, and that's the reason I learned about that book. I saw, I think, uh, the, uh, the author who drew Eberron, uh, artist, she posted something about seeing a uh, new, like, house moving castle movie, and uh, her merch, and the official account... Ghibli, uh, Studio Ghibli account replay, reply to her. That's how I came across her Twitter account, and when I saw the mentions of this book, I was like, oh wow, that actually exists, like an art book dedicated to Oberon. So, yeah. And this is... But this includes a lot of sketches of Oberon, so I am going to savor this book later, but just to give you a very sneak, sneak, sneak peek into this... So it's it's a very pretty book. Uh, they definitely put a lot of uh, care into it, and so so many sketches. I absolutely love art, when art books feature sketches and not just like the completed designs. Um, but yeah, I think this is it for this Japanese package. Well, I will still uh, need to spend a lot of time actually going through like all the Blu-rays and DVDs. Oh, and yeah, uh, since I already opened the book, here is the little bonus which was included with the book, and a little bookmark. And Blanca. Ah, that little moth is Blanca. But yeah, pretty pretty character. Uh listen to his voice lines. Uh he's great, he's great. Um uh, but yeah, this is about it. I ravaged the box, I got all the goodies, um my Sanrio Kipnik collection is complete now. Happy. It's also funny that <laughs> she is just upside down. I need to look up what the name of the character, Sanrio character is. But thankfully, uh, Gentaro can reunite with Ramuda and Dice now, so they'll be happy, happy for investing together. Um, and I guess Gentaro can tell them a story about going to Los Angeles and meeting some side in person. So, um, okay, thank you for, I don't know, watching this, not watching this, uh, and yeah, this is it for today.